how to ace your virtual assistant interview. So welcome to another video. I'm Christian John Orsos. I'm head of operations and recruiting at FEVA, and I've helped interview and recruit more than a hundred virtual assistants, media buyers, graphic designers, and more. So many job candidates have asked me, how do I do a better interview? So the focus of today's video is gonna be how to ace your interview so you can get that job and nail it on the first try. And if you stay until the end, you'll get to see a full mock-up interview where the founder and CEO of Feva, Omir Block, interviews me, he's the employer, and I'm the candidate. So the first thing you need to have to ace your BA interview, and this applies to other positions, by the way, is a dedicated, clear, tidy space where nobody interrupts you. This is not just to focus for this interview, but it's to show your employer that in the real job, when the time comes, you can work focused and be productive. Another thing you need to do is do your research in advance about the company. That way, whenever you get asked company-specific or industry-related questions, you don't freeze or you know how to fill in the blanks. Otherwise, you're gonna show some gaps in your interview, which are gonna affect you negatively. When you start an interview, you're most likely gonna get asked, how do you find about the job? And to talk about yourself. So see for yourself how I handle this question. Alrighty, Mr. Christian Orstos, thank you for joining my interview. Uh, I am the CEO and founder of Feva on your block. Um, I saw that you came from a, an application that we uh, that we posted online. Is that right? Yeah, I actually saw an ad on my feed. Um, so yeah, I clicked and I applied. Okay. What 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 made you what made you apply after that? Yeah, because I have jobs. I have had jobs where I pretty much did the same appointment setting through the phone, an email, called email. So. Because yeah. I had the experience, I, I saw that you were paying five per hour, so that was like, oh, wow. let's do it. Okay, very cool. So, how I want to start this, Christian? Um, I want to get to know you a little bit more as a person, uh, see if you're a culture fit. That actually matters to me a lot. And then we'll go over your experiences and skills and some of the things that you put in the uh, in the application to make sure that you're the right fit. So, um, it says here you're currently based in uh, in Peru and Lima, Peru. Is that right? Correct. Exactly. Awesome. Is that, is that is that where you're from? Yeah. Very cool. Very cool. Uh, do you do you enjoy living there? Do you travel like anywhere else outside of South America? Yeah, I've been to the U.S. Obviously. Okay, you've been to the U.S. Yeah, I mean, you speak pretty good English, right? Um, so you're in Lima, Peru, and do you live by yourself right now, or are you uh, living with your wife, kids, anything like that? Well, I live with my mom, but I I pay uh, I pretty much pay the utility, so I'm, I'm the breadwinner of the house, you would say. Okay, no, I'm very living, cool. So no, I'm living for free and with my parents, right? No, I'm, I'm paying yeah. I'm the bread, you know, for the house. For sure, that's very common, living with your mom. Like a lot of people don't pay their rent and bills. So it's cool that you're uh, that you're paying uh, yeah. your, your the bills and what, whatever else. Well, that's awesome. She actually doesn't have an income. So I, I rely, I mean, she relies on me a lot. Okay, very, man, that's, that puts pressure on you sometimes, yeah. right? It's good yeah. because I mean, I, I, need to, I need to perform, right? I need to deliver. I love that, I love that. Uh, so you live with your mom in Lima, travel to the U.S., and besides work, like what, what do you do outside of work? Well, I'm big into uh, going out and dancing here in Peru. It's that's okay. a big, I've actually been a dance teacher, salsa, merengue, anything Latin dance, I'm the guy. I'm the to-go guy. Uh, that's amazing. I did not know that about you, Christian. Um, so now, A lot of people don't know that because on my job, I'm like very professional, but that's my, the other side is like, you know, like Winston, the, the Churchill, like, like Winston Churchill, he was the Prime Minister of England and he was also a painter. He had like two separate things going on at the same time. He focused on like on one or the other. I like that. So you like yeah. to dance and go out and have fun. What, what else? Anything else? You like to travel? Uh, well, reading a lot, you know, reading uh, non-fiction, typical, like uh, The Slight Edge, books by like, yeah. Gary Vee. Um, I love nice. online courses. I love online courses. I love this. Okay. They can come awesome. by Ukraine um, Nice. They're gonna look into Joel Kaplan. So yeah, yes. learning. I'm big into that. 
That's awesome. That's awesome. So, like to read as well. Uh, go out, dance, very fun. Um, and like, what what are some of your like personal goals? Like, what what are in the next, in the next like one to two years? Where do you hope to see be? Do you hope to be in the same place as far as like living wise? Uh, talk to me about your short short talk. Uh, long yeah, time definitely. Goals. So in this question, what are your goals? It might sound like your employer wants to know all your life goals, but obviously don't say you want to go to the moon or climb Mount Everest, unless that's what you're hired for. You can talk a little bit about your life goals, but what your employer actually wants to hear is how your goals fit within the job you're applying to in your career. Definitely, living-wise, I think here for the next three years is going to be good because Peru, uh, the dollar is has appreciated a lot against the, the local currency. So a sol, a sol is like 25 cents of a dollar. That means a dollar is four sols here. So you can live large uh, living on dollars. You can live pretty large. And I don't think that's gonna change pretty soon. I think the economy, it's, I wouldn't say it's terrible, but it's yeah. It's not it, It's not amazing. It's not its highest point. So that means if you're in dollars, you're, you're, you're a king. And Very cool. Career-wise, I would definitely like to be not just, I mean, start as an appointment center, but eventually be either manager or team leader of other appointment centers. Okay, awesome. So that's cool. And have you had a managerial role before? No, I haven't had. I've been just, uh, you could say, uh, an appointment center. Okay. How many different jobs have you had in the last couple of years? I've had three jobs. Three jobs, okay. Are they all appointment setting related? One was actually account manager, an agency that was a part-time job. So I did a lot of the, I mean, not appointment setting, but onboarding the, the clients and launching the clients. Got it, got it, got it. Yeah, Very and cool. Retaining, so I'm gonna, I'm, and retaining the okay. clients, so calling them to say, hey man, well, you know, it's uh, end of the month, let's do a recap, let's jump on a call. Sometimes people didn't want to renew, but I, I took them on a call and say, hey, you know, like, you got these leads, you made an ROI, and we're charging this, yeah. so sh should the renew yeah. what's up? Yeah, you sound like you're very experienced in digital marketing, and I actually want to get into that in just a minute here, but like, tell me something about yourself that, like, tell me a cool fact or something, a cool accomplishment that you've had over the last couple of years besides, you know, dancing and reading. Now, this question on the surface tries to get you to state your biggest accomplishment. What your employer actually wants to see here is how your best values and qualities are reflected in the accomplishment and how you talk about it without exaggerating, bragging, or being too humble. So you should list your biggest accomplishments showing that you're a high achiever. But most importantly, you need to show that you have the qualities they are looking for. Well, a cool accomplishment, actually, in my school, I was one of the top, uh, like, performance-wise. One of the, uh, many years, I was like in the top three, my, my class had 90 people, I was in the top, in the top 10th, not in the top third. I mean, not only in the top third, but in the top 10. Like there were 90 people. I was always in the top nine of grades, not just, you know, grades, uh, behavior, uh, extra, extracurricular, yeah. like overall, overall performance, I uh, mean, social skills, everything I was. Yeah. All, so. Awesome, man, that's great. That's, one that's... year, my school was very competitive. So I wish I could have been say I, I was the best, but no, I was the, one year I was the third best. My school was extremely competitive. Like we had a guy who was in the Olympic karate, no, sorry, Taekwondo. He actually went to the to the Latin American Olympics in, in wow. Taekwondo. And wow. Other guy went uh, other why other guy went to uh, UCLA to study programming and he works at Airbnb. Uh, other guys have been to U Chicago to pursue beach So my school was like a very competitive group. It was not it was not peanuts. That's amazing. So very tough school and you always were in top 10 um, yeah. in terms of grade and oh, that's awesome. When when did you finish your school? In 2014, so that was exactly seven years ago. Seven years ago, 2014. That's funny because that's when I finished my high school. I was in 20, 2014. Uh, was, that, was, that, was that high school or college? No, that was high school, you could say. In Peru, there is no such thing really as high school, it's K-12. All schools are built K-12, so you do the whole school there. 12 years. Got it. So 12 years. Okay. So basically like high school, middle school, yeah, same. elementary school, high school all, all in one. Okay. So you were in top 10 and did you play any sports or did you do any, and did you have anything besides school that you were doing back then? 
yes, as I said, dance. I was not really big into sports. Like I could argue that dance is a sport. So I was like, it is definitely a sport. I mean, actually, people, look, people people play video games and they say it's a sport. Man, like people do chess and they say it's a sport. But dance, like I have never seen a professional dancer who is not fit. Never. Yeah. Interesting. Cool. Um, very cool. So I want I want to get to know a little bit more about your skills. I mean, it's, it's, as far as your personality, you know, I like that you're. It seems like you're ambitious. It seems like uh, you have the qualities that we want. You know, smart. Um, I like someone to have a personal. I like someone that has a personal life. I can't. You know, I love workaholics. Don't get me wrong, but I know I'm. I'm not gonna work 24 hours a day. So um, it is cool. So your personality definitely is definitely what we're looking for. Let's talk about your skill set. So. You've been in a, it sounds like you've been in an appointment center for a couple of years, like you said, you work for a few companies. Tell me a little bit of, about the niches that you worked for. So in this question, you're going to talk about the skills you have and what you have done in the past using these. So be honest, don't lie. Otherwise, it's going to show and there are going to be gaps that you won't know how to answer. This part is very important, so pay attention to this. When you get asked about your job experience, don't just stay the jobs you had, that actually go in depth about how you apply your skills for each job and how you solve problems. Yeah, I worked uh, first in the carpet cleaning niche. Mm -hmm. And in the carpet cleaning niche, we use Go High Level. We did a lot of text blast. Mm -hmm. And we really didn't do call calling a lot because people were on, on the job, so they didn't really answer the phone a lot, but they answered the texts. And we say, hey, you know, Mr. Mr. Prospect, can you can you handle an extra 20 jobs? Like the classic for that, can you handle an extra 20, 30 jobs? Mm -hmm. Some people say, you know, no, uh, F off. Some people say, yeah, you know, tell me more. What do you have to offer? Mm -hmm. Some people were like, yeah, okay, well, let's do it. Sign me up. When do we start? So okay. it's, a, I would say it's kind of a bottom barrel niche. Like people don't pay a lot of money in that niche. Like you can charge 22,000, 2,500. Um, mm -hmm. You can easily get a lot of clients for 500 and 1,000. So we definitely set up appointments. Um, and we had clients, believe it or not, that they stayed for eight, even nine months. Wow, eight and nine months. And That's even amazing. Though, even so, though cleaners don't make a lot of money, like 10K is a lot of money carpet cleaning because you charge $100, $200. For absolutely. That's definitely right. So, Carpet cleaning, were you calling their leads or were you calling carpet cleaners? Like, what was your role? Which were you calling? No, my job was appointment setter for the agency. So I was doing a lot of text blasts. We sometimes did call email to get agency appointments. And then Very cool. they would be the buyer doing the Facebook ads. And then they had everything going to many chat. They had a many chat chatbot that was very comprehensive. So that replaced an appointment setter. Actually, the chatbot did all the work. Okay, so that's one niche. What other? What, what about the other two? And then I did yeah. real estate appointment setting too. And Same thing. You called realtors. Yeah, realtors. In that case, we did more Instagram and Facebook ads. Sorry, Instagram and Facebook ads were the service, and I was doing Instagram and Facebook prospecting. So we got into the the agency Facebook accounts. They had like five different accounts for us, where they were profile funneled, right? Profile, yeah. profile optimized. Uh, and I actually developed a system that instead of reaching out to to regular people, to just random people, we only reach out to people that were already running ads. And we actually messaged to their ads, so they thought we were a lead. And then we would provide, we would start a long conversation with them to say, hey, you know, with what areas do you serve? Uh, oh, I'm seeing your ad here in my area, but I don't, I don't think you're local. Like, do you know why it's showing up here? So it was a very kind of Trojan horse way to pitch. So yeah, I was in so then, the system, so they were doing okay. everything outbound. And I say, hey, we can do like an in, out, inbound. Like we message people who are running ads. So we just message the ones who are already spending money. Got it. Man, you sound very educated about this uh, about this role. So how long did you have this RE, uh, real estate agency job for? It was for four months. Four um, months. Yeah, it was for months. We were getting a lot of appointments then. We were getting a lot of appointments. Like, I was doing my job brilliantly. We, we had some months with hundreds of appointments organically. Not, not made ads, but the closers were not doing their job. Like, the closers were not closing the amount that 
were just defined, so really it was a lot of there was a lot of inefficiency, right? Like pipeline. Yeah. It was pipeline, then the, the conversion was small compared to to the work we were doing. Got it. What? So let's go back. What happened with the carpet cleaning? Is it the same thing? A lot of appointments in the closers didn't, didn't, didn't do right? No, I just because the, the average value of the client was not high. Um, I mean, they didn't want to give me a raise. Like they, want, they wanted to stay at 3.5 per hour. And instead of the real estate, they offered $4 per hour. And I actually okay. got the job. I got offered the job. I got reached out to. Like I was not looking for another job. I had an agency owner reaching out to me. He, he told okay. me. So you went from cleaning to RE, and then what happened after? Uh, um, then, so right now that agency has downsized. So that's what I'm pretty, I would say I'm, I'm pretty concerned about the situation. That's what I'm looking for. Ideally a five per hour, so I can not only upgrade my income, but just keep doing my job at another agency. Got it, so $5 an hour. So you've worked for two companies, carpet cleaning and real estate. Correct. Okay, because I, th I, I think you said three, but um, let's just focus on those two. Oh no, so, the first one, remember, the first one was account manager, also for a carpet cleaning agency, but that was before, that was before the Okay, and then, and then the real estate one, that was yeah, the second. account manager, uh, carpet cleaning, appointment setting, real estate appointments. Got it, okay, that makes sense. And do you, pr do you prefer to be an appointment setter over an account manager? Honestly, yeah, yeah, because I can. Add, I think I can add more value uh, as an appointment setter. Okay. If the closer, if the closer can close, then for me it makes more sense to use my skills to to set up more appointments than talking to the current clients. I love that. I love that. So, what do you look for in a job? What is it? That, what is the type of things that you are like? And how you have to have this? Is it like the offer, the culture. What are some things that? It's a, it, so this is probably one of the most important questions here. So keep watching until the end to see how you tackle this. When your employer asks you, what are you looking for in a job? You need to read the room and read between lines. So here, don't talk about salary or superficial things, but instead talk about your expectations regarding company culture, growth, and how your expectations can match theirs. Be honest and transparent. Yeah, definitely they will need to have an, a winning offer because okay. again, in the real estate agency, maybe the offer was the issue that was not converting or the closers were not good, one or, one or the other. So I really want to work for an agency that has a winning offer, a proven scalable offer. That's Proven that's scalable good. offer. Okay. Do you yeah. care that we don't, we don't have a lot of, we don't have any appointment centers. Do you care that you're the first one? I would love to be the first one. Okay. Because if I'm the first and one, I can actually help you tweak. I can actually help you tweak the messaging. That's gonna help. When so got it. So when things are a little off, like things are not working, um, what what do you normally do when when there's tough decisions coming up? Like, do you challenge yourself to figure it out? Do you reach out to me and try to figure out with us? How do, how do you manage like tough situations? You know, what I do is I take kind of a step back. I don't just keep doing what's not working. I, I consult all the materials that I have. Like I have a lot of free eBooks, free PDFs, free courses, mini courses, paid courses. And I kind of try to optimize all the knowledge that I have and say, okay, you know, we can do this. Like I saw in a course that they were doing uh, the text blast, right? And then definitely I use that in my second job. So that's kind of, I, I would say, go back to the basics, sometimes learn more and just keep refining my skills. Like if, I'm, if, a script is not, if a script is not working, we need to refine it, etc. Got it, okay. Um, at, your, uh, at your previous real estate appointment setting, uh, carpet cleaning, how many appointments a day were you getting? With me, like in my role, we were getting between 10 to 20 per week in both agencies. How much were you specifically getting per day? With me, per week? 10 to 20 per week. That was my performance. Mm. 10 to 20 per week using all types of platforms like Facebook, Instagram outreach, cold email. Yeah. Okay. Do you know what the conversion was that uh, out of the 10 to 20, how many of these converted? Yeah, for target cleaning, it was like 15 to 20%. And for real estate, it was like 7 to 10%. That was slow. 
that's also that's also because realtors realtors are a very tough niche realtors like yeah a lot of realtors they don't have money they don't have clients but they act like they are like they are the king you know they are untouchable you can talk to them they're so busy and no they like they don't have any clients like but you can yeah, tell that, like, a lot of people like that you can't yeah for sure you need, you need to treat yeah. them like they are not the best style, but at the same time they're not so it's like it's, it's tricky awesome well yeah you're gonna you're gonna experience this with a lot of agencies you know we, we deal a lot with a lot of dentists for instance so a lot of dentists think they're the shit so um as long as you're open to you know growing and getting better then there's no worry about that yeah um so yeah we use instagram facebook cold email as well um, and you said you have experience in go high level, so you understand, you understand how to build triggers and automations and utilize that, right? Yeah, I know everything about go high level. I've taken the free course. Um, unfortunately, nice. there's no certification yet, but I've taken, I've watched all the videos of Kristen Seal, and I've watched pretty much, I can't say all because I would be lying if I said one by one, but I've watched the ones that I needed of uh, Chase and the other guy from Sean. Yeah, Sean and Chase, I watched all of them. So. I, I know how to use go high level. I can do. You can put me to test triggers, campaigns, uh, forms, service. I can do. I can do them. Okay. Yeah. One of the things I'm gonna do with you is I'm gonna put you through a skill test after this just to make sure you can. Uh, uh, you know, you can send out email. You know how to use uh, cold email. How to send cold email blasts like you said you do at Facebook and Instagram just to make sure you can. You know, your grammar is correct and how to optimize uh, the system that we have. Um, cool. So. Your expected pay is five dollars an hour. You're available, obviously, like you said, you're full time. Um, anything else I should know about your skill set? Skill skill set when it comes to appointment setting in the carpet cleaning or real estate niche. You know, again, it's a little bit different than dental. Yeah. Is there anything else I should know? Obviously, I was no, well, not obviously, but in any niche, I'm sure if because I know how to speak Spanish. If you talk to the prospect in Spanish and mm. they are a native Spanish speaker, the report is built immediately. Hmm. Oh, so you also speak Spanish. Realtors, the realtor is Mexican. A lot of carpet cleaners, a lot are Mexican or uh, Puerto Rican. Sure. If you talk to them in Spanish, it's easier to break the barrier. You know, they trust you more. So that's okay. Very that's cool. Big deal. I have an idea. Then here's what I'm gonna do for a skill test. I'm going to have you write uh, to a. You're gonna be a prospecting dentist, so I want you to write what you would think would make sense. Just in English and in Spanish. Okay pretending like you're sending out an email and I want to see what you would do if it's an email, if it's a Facebook message and if it's an Instagram message Perfect. in English and Spanish, I'll send it to you on, on email. Um, and then based on that skill test, I'm going to assess this interview. I took a lot of notes here to make sure that uh, can go over what we just talked about. And then uh, if it makes sense, uh, you'll be getting an offer from us. So pay attention to your email, pay attention to your Facebook. We reach out to people on there. Um, and that's pretty much it. Before I go, do you have any questions for me about uh, about anything? I know you did some research on us before. Uh, not really. I think that's it. Cool. Cool. Awesome. Well, Christian, thank you so much for your time, and then uh, we'll stay in touch, okay? Awesome. Perfect. And that was a mock up interview. Obviously, you're going to have some questions that might not be in this video in some of the interviews. There are going to be interviews with more or less questions. However, you can apply these frameworks to your future interviews so you can get the job on the first try. And that was a mock-up interview. Obviously, you're going to have some interviews where you might have more or less questions. Questions that are not always going to be the same, but you can apply these frameworks to your future interviews so you can get that job on the first try. By the way, if you like the video, let me know in the comments below what your biggest takeaway was. And if you want to see more content like this on a regular basis, just subscribe to my channel. If you want to be one of our candidates, there is a link in the description below where you can apply to work with us, to work with one of our clients and be selected as a virtual assistant, media buyer, graphic designer, or account manager. There is a link in the application. We'll see if you're a good fit and if we decide you're a good fit, we'll reach out to you to set up an interview. Again, thanks for watching and see you all next time.